Hello everybody, this is Mina Azar and you are watching the Surgical Whiteboard. The seventh episode will be about the diverticular disease. Diverticular disease of the colon is more common in Western countries, older age and low fiber diet, which are all factors leading to chronic constipation. Chronic constipation in turn leads to increased intraluminal pressure in the relatively narrow segment of the colon which is the sigmoid colon. This leads to the formation of diverticulosis. As we saw in the last video, this is a cross section of the colonic wall. Here we can see the circular muscle layer, the longitudinal muscle layer which is the tinea coli, in green we see the mucosa and the um, erendites epiblocca supplied by branches of the vasa recta. This branch of the vasa recta pierces the circular muscle layer to reach the mucosa which leave a relatively weak spot of the muscular layer. In cases of increased intraluminal pressure, such as by chronic constipation, the mucosa bulges through this weak point outwards through the muscular layer, forming a pocket of mucosa and submucosa covered by serosa, which is called a pseudo-diverticle. Unlike a true diverticle, such as the mucous diverticle of the small intestine, a pseudo-diverticle lacks the musculosa in its wall. Any mechanical erosion at its base can lead to exposure of the branch of the vasa recta and leads to bleeding, which is a common complication of the diverticular disease. Obstruction of its entrance with hard stool can lead to inflammation and in turn, as a thin-walled pseudo-diverticle, uh, this may ease the rupture. These four mechanisms, uh, which is diverticular formation, bleeding, inflammation and rupture sums up all the clinical picture and the complication of the diverticular disease which start from asymptomatic cases in which uncomplicated diverticle are formed then recurrent left iliac fossa pain and then inflammation which may be complicated by abscess or perforation painless bleeding or late complication like fistulas and stenosis general rules of treatment Asymptomatic cases needs no treatment, recurrent pain needs an only follow-up in outpatient cases, inflammation and bleeding need inpatient treatment, uh, conservative or surgical, late complications may need elective surgical treatment. Here we will discuss a, a colonic diverticular disease classification and treatment according to the recent German guidelines. In this classification, type 0 diverticular disease is the asymptomatic diverticulosis which needs no treatment. Type 1 is the acute uncomplicated inflammation or diverticulitis. It's uh, classified, uh, divided further into type 1a, which is diverticulitis, type 1b is diverticulitis, accompanied by buried diverticulitis, which is a CT finding, in which the fat tissue around the colon is seen congested and inflamed. For both, treatment in the acute phase is intravenous antibiotics, uh, fluid diet and this is, this is a conservative treatment. The elective treatment for 1A is not recommended. In stage 1B, elective resection of the sigmoid colon is uh, recommended in cases of uh, immunosuppression. Type 2 is the cases of acute complicated diverticulitis on brief diverticulitis. It's divided further into 2A, which is a microabscess uh, less than 1 cm in diameter, 2B, macroabscess, more than 1 cm in diameter. 2C is free perforation, which is further divided into 2C1, purulent perforation, and 2C2, fecal perforation. Treatment accommodation of stage 2A with microabscess is just like the stage 1B, diverticulitis and periverticulitis, uh, intravenous antibiotics and fluid diet, and then elective resection after the acute attack. On the other hand, a stage 2B macroabscess more than 1 cm must be drained under cover of intravenous antibiotics. Drainage option is a big tail city guided drainage or um, uh, laparoscopic lavage on drainage, then elective operation after the attack. A stage 2C free perforation is an indication of emergency operative treatment. In perilent peritonitis with no risk factors, the treatment of choice is emergency sigmoidectomy with risk factors is uh, emergency sigmoidectomy with covering ileostomy. In cases of fecal peritonitis with no risk factors, sigmoidectomy with covering ileostomy and with risk factors is a Hartmann operation. 
Risk factors of anastomotic leakage after a perforated diverticular disease are septic shock, diabetes mellitus, renal failure, and immunosuppression. Type 3 diverticular disease is a chronic diverticulitis. It is subdivided into 3A, 3B, and 3C. Stage 3A is a symptomatic uncomplicated diverticular disease. It's like a stage uh, 0 uh, asymptomatic but presented with recurrent pain without signs of inflammation. Stage 3B is a relapsing uncomplicated diverticulitis. This is when a stage 1A or B uncomplicated diverticulitis uh, occurs more than once which is relapsing then it is a 3P stage. And stage 3C is a relapsing complicated diverticulitis. This is when a stage 3P relapsing diverticulitis is further complicated with a chronic stenosis of the sigmoid colon or a fistula between the sigmoid colon and the uh, urinary bladder or the vagina. Treatment recommendation of a symptomatic uncomplicated diverticular disease is follow-up. For a, a relapsing uncomplicated disease, is so it should be tailored therapy. Um, uh, the patient can uh, decide uh, whether to uh, uh, stay with a conservative treatment or undergo elective uh, sigmoid resection. In stage 3C, uh, which is complicated diverticulitis, there should be a surgical, an elective surgical treatment. And at last, the stage 4 diverticular disease is diverticular bleeding. The treatment of choice is um, conservative treatment because most cases are self-limited bleeding. The second step can be a hemostasis trial with colonoscopy. If failed, a CT angiography is uh, recommended to locate the bleeding and to attempt an interventional treatment with coiling of the feeding artery. If all the previous failed, the last step is surgical treatment uh, of segment resection with localization or in uh, cases in which the localization is um, not accomplished, a subtotal colectomy uh, is performed. Here is a quick summary. Type 0, asymptomatic diverticulosis, no treatment, commended. Type 1, acute uncomplicated inflammation, conservative treatment, commended. And uh, later, elective treatment in cases of 1B. Type 2, acute complicated diverticulitis, uh, initial conservative treatment of cases of microabscesses, microabscesses drainage, free perforation emergency uh, operation, type 3 chronic diverticulitis, uh, follow up in asymptomatic cases, elective surgical treatment in uh, complicated and relapsing cases, type 4 diverticular bleeding, conservative treatment, interventional treatment, and a failed surgical treatment. At last, we would like to discuss the uh, surgical principles of the Hartmann operation. In cases of uh, severe inflammation of the sigmoid colon with uh, um, fecal perforation and uh, high risk of uh, anastomosis leakage, the sigmoid colon is resected. And to avoid anastomosis, the distal rectal stump is closed blindly and the proximal and the proximal end uh, is of the uh, descending colon is fashioned into an end colostomy. After the inflammation subsides and the peritonitis subsides in 6 uh, to 12, uh, 12 weeks, a continuation is possible through a colorectal anastomosis. Mm -hmm.